<sighs> Have you ever heard the phrase in for a penny, in for a pound? It's a phrase which here means might as well go for it, whether or not you're a gambling person. Uh, okay, good. So, what the first thing I was worried about is that we'd spawn in a fortress. <laughs> um, the second thing I was worried about is that there would be no fortress at all anywhere nearby. The third thing I was worried about is bringing no blocks to build it. I, was, I thought that maybe we'd get more than four spare pieces of obsidian to stand on. Let's go back. We're still probably vulnerable to, to ghasts spawning here. So, we should worry about that. Ugh. Good thing I made a non-automated cobble gem. Gonna build a cobble for now. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna build a cobble for now, because I haven't got any. Gonna build with... Tough for now. We need a box to live in so that we're a bit safe. And then we can probably just build out a platform for mobs to spawn on and hope that none of those mobs is a ghast. I would be a ghast if one of those were a ghast. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> These are the jokes, folks. I don't write them, I just say them. No, I... that's not true. I don't know how soft tough is. Um, I mean, based on its name, you'd think maybe not very. But that... That said, the speed at which you can mine this stuff is much faster than many other things which are not called tough. So, the reason I ask is that um, you're going to want to make sure that the thing you've built your platform out of does not break when a gas throws a fireball at it. So one thing you can do, the if you're not aware of vanilla Minecraft mechanics, distances in the nether are compressed compared to the overworld by a factor of eight. So if you travel eight blocks in the nether, you'll travel, uh, sorry, if you travel one block in the nether, you've traveled eight blocks in the overworld, but the portal connects to a nearby portal. So you can't just step a block, put a portal, have traveled eight blocks. Not that that would be even remotely worth it anyway. But it means that if you travel a decent number of blocks in the nether and then build another portal, you've traveled an eight decent numbers of blocks in the overworld and you can go somewhere else. It's really handy in both overworld exploration and sky blocks because if you need, for example, a different biome, it's very easy to go exploring enough to actually find one. I'm feeling fairly safe here. Nothing has spawned that shouldn't. Nothing is attacking me right now. Nevertheless, I'm building a big... <laughs> Big tough box. We're doing this entirely because you need a wither skeleton skull to create the spirit recycling thing. We yes, ask what this makes. It's the soul diffuser, not spirit diffuser. And it's this eternal soul. Oh no, that's what we've got. It's the soul flame, which needs a wither skeleton skull. Stabled in the vaults, blah, blah, blah. I don't think there's a way of finding this except from whatever this is. <laughs> you can apparently put Antimatter on the skeleton skull, that's not what we want to see. Um, or make with a skeleton spawn, so I guess we'll do that. I don't know how big this should be either. Or how far away. I'm guessing the 24 blocks thing still applies. Doesn't feel far enough to me, does it? And I don't know if things will spawn on it anyway, or whether they have to spawn in what the game considers to be uh, a, a fortress. And I don't know how we'd find a fortress. I'm not even sure if it's possible because um, I appreciate it's obvious that this is a void world but in other sky block um, worlds that I've made, other mod packs for example, all the mod 7 which I was just playing on my own um, the they would spawn but there would be one you know it would be obvious, it would be visible it wouldn't be this far away this really feels like there's actually nothing here and not not just nothing but structure. <laughs> but I don't know, therefore, if I have to make sure that I'm putting my platform where there would have been uh, a fortress. Or maybe I have to build my platform 
out of nether brick. Well, we'll figure this out. This wasn't as terrible as it could have been. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, I put the la brought a lava bucket. Because in the theory that I'm immune to lava, if I fall off, I can swim up the lava. <laughs> Did I do a bad idea? I don't know. It is my idea. It flows like water in the nether. So it shouldn't be too bad. Okay. So we'll figure out how to make um, with a skeleton spawn uh, and come back and employ this tactic once we've worked out what it is. I've asked in the Discord, but while I wait for that, why don't we make some fireworks? Why? Because again, if you're not familiar with vanilla mechanics, which I'm saying that in, I don't mean to be condescending, I'm not familiar with vanilla mechanics, okay? I have been playing modded Minecraft since like 110. Anyway, um, 17. Anyway, with the elytra on, which I have, don't get don't get it twisted, um, and a firework in your hand, don't try this at home, you can gain height and, and momentum and impetus by setting off the firework in your hand while flying. As mentioned, do not try this at home. This is a video game aimed at children. <laughs> yeah. Um, the fireworks are not too difficult to make. They're paper and gunpowder, and you get three. And we do have gunpowder because we made a mob farm, and also we already have some, and I don't know why. And we have paper, which was made out of sugar cane. There should be some lying around somewhere anyway. We can, I want to figure out this snap thing, actually. Let's see, at some point today, maybe, we'll see if we can invent a way of getting this snad to constantly like, recheck this sugar cane above it. Paper, fireworks. And what we can do there <laughs> um, is mark our exit in the nether using the map. I don't have any like moral qualms with using a waypoint to find my way back in a literal void world. You know, <laughs> in maybe in a world where there exists the concept of landmarks, we could consider. Ooh, Piglin has spawned, but that's not what we wanted. Um, then, you know, maybe you could say, don't use... Ooh! That's really handy. The map has given stuff away. So maybe this is what we need to do. Um, I don't know how to get over there safely or get back safely, except for running away. Um, but well, now that we know it's directly west, maybe we don't need to put a waypoint. We're going to put a waypoint anyway. So if we go over there, I'm assuming this is a fortress, but I don't know what that sort of structure is over there. It's really interesting, actually. We should, let's, let's find out. At least we've got a landing pad. <laughs> oh, hello. Why are you... Why are you hostile? Oh, because you're a piglin, not a zombie piglin. So look at the middle number in your uh, map there. That's your height, right? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. This is not a void world. This is a... This is a not a fortress, but the other one where you need to be wearing gold. This is dangerous. I'm going back. <laughs> I'm not actually sure how dangerous this is, now I think about it, because... We're OP, right? Although that piglin just now really hurt. I'll be honest. I didn't like that very much. Um, if you're wearing a gold... I think anything gold and you're safe from the piglins, they won't attack you. But I don't think that will necessarily give us... Uh, wither skeletons, which is what we're here for. So we're going to have to explore a bit more. I was going to say um, chest plate because we need our elytra. So we're going to make some gold boots, basically. Probably enough. And hopefully, just by wearing these boots, we're at least safe from being attacked. Because, it's, again, vanilla mechanics that I'm not 100% sure of. Those were the days. Next M. Bastion, that's the one. Um, there are piglins that will attack you if you're not wearing gold. And there are piglins that will attack you anyway. And if you attack a piglin, you are 
they, they, they're just gonna kill you. <laughs> All of them will come down on your head. It's the old um, zombie pigmen. But they're not all zombies. There are still zombie piglins in the game. They're not all zombies anymore. And some of them, I believe, are... What's the word? Enraged? No. There's a word that means enraged, but not that one. Like feral or something. And they will attack you anyway. Uh, could just find out, right? What are you all about? You're a hog. You're attacking me. Okay. I do have the ability to heal out here, of course. And I have this, so you can just get lost. <laughs> Brilliant. You gonna hurt me? No, because I'm wearing gold, so this is working. So you are a piglin brute, and you're a bad news. If I hit you, do you hit me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. Whoa! Okay, that hurts. <laughs> the brutes hurt, even when you've got that much armor on. So anyway, hello and welcome back to Elchius Plays Minecraft Vault Hunter Sky Vault. Woohoo! Wait, what? Do you know what? I never realised you don't move your legs when you jump. That's so weird. There's my new nether portal behind us on the little nether... I'm going to say mountain. It's more of a... Yeah, look. The nether mound. We've done it. We found the nether fortress, which contains the wither skeletons, which contain the wither skeleton heads, which I put in the chest where I think it's such... Like that live, and we can finally make the soul diffuser. All of that was just so that I could melt this stuff. <laughs> um, I actually noticed there used to, it used to be that um, these from different vaults didn't stack. Very convenient that they now stack. Thank you for that change. Uh, we can make a new vault recycler turn into the thing. Let's do that. Another thing I've done, which I'll mention while I sleep here, oh, anyway, is. I went into a raw vault with a whole bunch of buckets, which we can make because we've got a stupid amount of iron. And just stocked up on, not there, um, lava buckets. I, I did say a while ago that I wanted to make a tank for such a thing. But that's effort. And I haven't got a mod that can do it, and it's not that big of a deal, so I'm not too worried about it. Ah, flipping da. There we go. So I did die in there. It's not a good idea to die if you don't have a spare elytra. And uh, oh, I, I want an axolotl, by the way. Can I have a look at him? There he is. Huh? Still in out. In a bucket. In the raw vault where I went to get... Try and find a, a spare elytra. I didn't find one, but what I did find was a chromatic iron cave. I got a load of that, and I just decided to mine it out, get a load of blocks, and then build a really long bridge from me to my uh, corpse, which worked to an extent in that it did work and I did get my corpse back. The problem was the thing that I walked on, the bridge that I made, then spawned a whole bunch of enemies. Some enemies are still uh, hostile in the nether, so anyway, here we are. You just do this and you get soul dust, and then the soul dust turns into soul things. Sharks. As usual, it's a nine per one thing you'll notice is you get a huge amount. Of course, they can press down into soul shards, which you could then put in your soul shard pouch thingy. But these are the sorts of things which make two by two drawers really handy because you don't have a lot of them. But you have to you have to take up a slot here. Um, and if you wanted to, we haven't got to the actual drawer controller. But the more things you can put in your drawers, the more things will get removed from your inventory in one go when you do have a drawer controller. And then finally, we can make ourselves. A golem friend. Do that. Don't you think it'll melt? Okay. Snow. <laughs> Easy. Gonna move around. There we go. Working fine. I thought this golem might choose to stand in not one place forever. <laughs> you know, I don't control. Oh, there we go. Look. I don't control the golem. If the golem wants to move, the golem may move. No problem. Hooray! All right, well, that's that done. And you see, this is not the only thing that you can turn into that stuff. Basically, anything from the vault that says it has soul value, you can melt in that thing. So if you've got a ridiculous amount of stuff, which we're starting to, you can turn it into 
Hello? You can turn it into bits of soul and then into actual soul and then you can sell it in the black market. Let's see what we can afford. From there. And then we'll have a look at our next crystal. <laughs> I haven't got any. Makes some good idea. Uh, see that thing. Repair core for 749, possibly. Now we have these vault idols. These are um, associated with those god altars that you see inside the vault. They boost... I think this is the case. I haven't seen one yet. They boost your affiliation with whichever god they're appropriate to. So you don't know which one that's going to be. We haven't actually earned any... Um, it's here, I think. We haven't earned any... You know, What's the word you're looking for here? With any gods. Um, this can happen when you complete one of their idols but, uh, inside the vault. But it hasn't happened to us yet. We are still virgins in that respect. So let's uh, sort ourselves out with some more crystals and uh, see what happens. Now, I, I lost a hat. My, it's my uh, fried egg hat. I don't know where that went. I do not know why they are spawning here. I mean, I, I get it. I have a piece of water here, but there's nowhere for the baddies to spawn in this area. And why they... Maybe they just spawn in dark water. That would make perfect sense. Uh, again, vanilla mechanics. Who knows? That's 16. Sorted. Fog. And some Larimar. Can we finally make our draw controller? Yes, we have. <laughs> Job done. So let's see how this works. I'm going to put it... I will put it here. I was umming and ahhing about not putting it here. One thing we're going to want to do is connect these drawers to these drawers. But let me show you. The... The basic idea is that every single drawer in a 12x12 cube, as I've mentioned, I believe, will be connected to this draw controller. And if you interact with the draw controller with a double right click sort of jobby, everything that can go in the drawers will come out of your inventory and go into the drawers. So you notice that this uh, copper ring dot is still in here, even though it could have gone in there. Now, I want to therefore connect this draw controller to those drawers. One thing I could do is just put more drawers. And I kind of don't object to that as a principle. Um, we could move. I want to be able to pick up the chests, but I can't. Uh, we could move these chests aside and connect all of those drawers up. Not a bad idea, um, especially considering I'm going to want some you know, little two by two drawers for some of the smaller things that I want. Um, but for now, well, let me show you how you might do it. Trom. So draw trim. I know it's not how you spell draw, but it's a subset of how you spell draw. Uh, it's actually very, very cheap. It doesn't involve any vault goodies, so I, I will do that. You get a decent amount, and it's cheap, and you might as well do it. So, I'm just going to replace this stuff, really. We can remove this later, or just leave it in place. It doesn't actually make a difference if you end up connecting the drawers to one another. And there you go. So now if I have copper in my inventory, I double right click here. I have no copper in my inventory, and it's gone back in there. 239. So the, the power of drawers here is that you can fill up with all those things. When you get out of the vault, double right click on the thing. Everything that you've given space in the drawer system will just be sucked out of your inventory. Except for if it's in a bag. And we'll get to that. We have a way of automating that as well. But it's not available to us at the moment. And I do plan on dealing with it. Which is why we're saving up so much for the Xnet. Which is four. And a bit of power which is actually one, but we wanted power, which is five. But if we really wanted to, we could, you know, put one in here and then spend 11 on this. No, that's a lot. In way, we could just basically save nine altogether. How many have we got? That's a good amount of eight. But there's the four we need for one of our things. You will also find that you don't duplicate and waste space if you have drawers. Because A, you can see where everything goes. B, you have a drawer controller that will just take everything out. So there is our use of POG. Job done. Should we see what our vault has for us? Because our, our main goal now is not only to get this quest done, but also to try and get even more knowledge points. Because we can't use Xnet without power. We can't use power. Like, we can, we can do stuff with power. Power, but to no avail because we have nothing to power with the power. 
Hey, we got a lucky bolt. This means extra item rarity. That's all right, isn't it? How, how good is this, by the way? Yeah, it's, it's got some durability. Please don't break in the vault. I haven't considered that. Three monoliths. We know what to do. This one is right in front of us. We are going north to south. Put the thing in the thing. We go N to S, and we take the monolith. And I think that will be sufficient to, to tell me that I, I've been this way, even though I've now also marked it, because for some reason you can't activate a monolith with a block in your hand. I have a question. When a shield says effect on hit, is that when I'm hit or when the shield takes the hit? Hello, what are you doing that? Oh yeah, collect those flowers as well. Those are important. Another chance for this to work out. On the way back. <laughs> It's going to be... I think it's always ornate chests. Ah, uh, maybe not. It, what I'm thinking is, if it's not going to be living chests, and we're here for knowledge essence, then I don't know if I want to spend the time looting it. <laughs> Alright, job done. Let's go and do the uh, X marks room. See how well we get on with that. And when that, you know, inevitably bites us and curses us and makes our lives a misery and wonder why we ever came to this stupid vault, then we'll, we'll move on. Why are you just... Why are you? Ah! Bad news. Creeper? Rude. Uh, excuse me? Alright. <laughs> not screw it up this time. Either. No! <laughs> why? Where are you, Rhythmic? Are you out? Riverdance following me. <laughs> That's what happens when Riverdance survives the apocalypse. Okay, well, that's two for two. Thanks, game. You suck. Ooh, hello. Almost tempted to spend all my knowledge points on just getting bigger bags. <laughs> Never going to get us any progress in the actual uh, playing of the game, but... Oh, it's, it's going to be so nice having plenty of room for all that stuff. Still cutting it fine. Maybe we don't like doing that so much, but it's exciting. 10,000 XP, that's more likely. Mm -hmm. Decent wallet of XP. Now, how much of this can we just double right click on here? Uh, basically none. <laughs> Yoink. You believe you found two X mark rooms and neither of them was a success. <laughs> it's very rude. How's it so much worse? <laughs> the, the damage drops off so much. I mean, we're going to put this one away anyway. Replace it with this one, which I was using in the nether. Alrighty, I spent some time. I've made a whole bunch of 2x2 two two drawers. But remember, the whole point of these is not because of their capacity, which is low. Look, stack limit 8 for each drawer. So, same size as these, but four things in them. But because you can double right click on the controller now that we're, you know, amazing. And it just sucks everything from your inventory that matches into the drawers. I will note, however, there are other upgrades. Remember, we used the void one for this. Uh, hello? Not this, this. We should make a void one for that, maybe. Um, that deletes extra things, but you can increase the size of the drawer with an upgrade. And I've done that for this one here. So this has got... 17 stacks of lapis in it. I did consider making for lapis a compacting drawer because there's lapis, there's compressed lapis, and there's double compressed lapis. But now I can do 128 with this upgrade. Or, yeah, which is 16 times extra. And there's another upgrade. There's other times you can do it 32 times, I think. I just couldn't afford it because it was chromatic. It was black steel. Um, but look, this one was just chromatic iron and some vault diamonds. So I did that. Um, and I've got a lot of extra spaces. I've taken a lot of stuff out of these chests that has random stuff in them. And um, I'm thinking of also maybe bringing some of these over as well. I'll put the iron here, for example. Let's move the copper. When you pick it up, it retains its inventory. I don't know if that's because it's locked or that's how it always works. 
feel free to experiment without me. Um, but I think it's probably time we go into the vault. We have one spare crystal, and the next one we want. Let's see what the next rock is going to demand from us. Nothing onerous. We do need to build our potato farm, but everything else seems manageable. So what do we want from a vault? We want a whole bunch of knowledge essence. That's very important. We also want level 24. That's our quest. And we have a bounty, which is silver scrap, which comes from guild chests. I forget. Gilded chests. So we want gilded chests. Um, do we have we have we have a skill point to spend? Let's do that first. We could upgrade one of our um, find the right place. Our talents. Speed is always four, so we can't upgrade speed unless we're really worrying. Think about it. Strength is possibly worth it because we'll be as strong as ever possible ever. Right? If we upgrade that, we can enhance our javelin, enhance the speed, enhance the damage. That seems really cool. Make it able to transfer any on-hit effect. Include cloud stunning and shocking. That's really cool. It costs three. Ethereal could be a free shot. We do... I have complained that using the javelin all the time is, you know, costing me all my mana. I'm wondering if we upgrade the damage of... If we upgrade strength, we naturally upgrade the damage of our javelin. But when that's maxed out, we can do that. Apparently we're still on living chests, which is good because we want stuff from them. So I think let's make ourselves as strong as possible from these. <laughs> we can get even stronger from tools. And get our stuff out of here and head into the vault. I did put a stack upgrade in my sack of rocks, by the way. So now when we get endless amounts of vault stone, it will not fill up these quite so quickly. Oh, nice. We got another lucky vault, which is... Item rarity. Oops. <laughs> Wrong button. Yeah. Don't know what flavour vault this is. Seems alright with me. We've got um, another scavenger vault, which we like to see because it's uh, a fun one. We are going north to south. And this is another vault where you just do everything. We want gilded chests, we want wooden chests, and we want skeletons and zombies. First thing I find? All of you are. Got my new sword, notice. This is the one I was using in the nether. I'm not sure I go through that. Of course, in, uh, in the overworld, vault swords and stuff are immortal. So I didn't have to worry about running into the nether with a very powerful sword. Uh, um, I don't have to worry about the min-maxing of it, which is very helpful indeed. Here, of course, we do. So I've already put unbreaking on it. Apparently, you can put looting on it. You can't put beheading on it. I don't even know if that's still a thing. I wanted beheading because I was looking for heads, <laughs> basically. Ooh, upper leaf. It's possible we want to upgrade our dash now. Our mobility in the vaults is becoming ever more important as we start doing these vaults that require ever more searching for stuff. What are you? Mana. Do you know what? I have not yet found uh, a time request from those things. Is that Bendar? Oh, I must have because I've got all four... Got all four jewels, but I don't remember giving away time. Maybe I just right click on it and don't need it. It's fine. One of these days I'm going to give away time that I don't have because I'm on my way out. And lose the vault because of it. Alright, definitely an ore room. Not going to get us a huge amount of progress here towards our scavenger hunt. But we did get a little bit of progress, but we've got some ripped pages. And that wasn't the only pog I'm ever going to need, right? So we really do need to be ever vigilant for more and more ores. I'm going to need... Like you saw, one of the recipes we looked at was the Echo Pog. Two of them, which was eight pogs each, 16 pogs. That's a lot of these ores. And that's, you know, an extreme example, but there's a spectrum between those two. You know, it's not one or the other. There's going to be many other things that we need pogs for. In, in our plans, probably including some of the Xnet stuff that we're saving up for. To kill the zombies, we need them for the hand. Got five of that. Don't need them anymore. Ready to stop attacking me now. I've got what I needed. We do need just gilded chests now. I think. Oh well, let me check. Uh, third, yeah, we only need gilded chests. Don't have to worry about whether monoliths spawn in special rooms because. Well, we know that the Red Scrolls are not going to spawn in anything other than Gilded Chests, and there's none of those in there. This one's full of Gilded Chests, though. 
think if a generic explodes. We've got to be more careful here, because we are now breaking these like this, so don't hit the TNT. Ooh. Ah, red scroll. Hey, what? Hello. Run away. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't so great. There's two. Job done. We've actually done the, the vault, which is really good. We've got six minutes left. Ooh, key piece. Do that. First key piece ever. I think we're actually done in this room, which is nice, because we've got two and a bit minutes to just check out this last room. Which is a dark game. Look. Dark village room. Which is, of course, another room full of exploration that we don't have time for. We do have our um, food and stuff, so if we really want to, we can spend a bit of time and spend some health on it. Especially since it's a guild. It would be great if there had been a. Uh, um, hand in in this place, wouldn't it? I'm going to go and find that hand in and not get actually stuck. That's a bit more time for me, thank you very much. We give you this. We give you this. And we give you this. And you let us out. <laughs> Yay! Oh, well done, everybody. We used a few kiwis that we didn't necessarily need to, but I think it was worth it. The alternative being dying horribly in the vault in an avoidable way. Phew. Another level up. Brilliant. 15,000 XP. We're getting there. We're doing well on XP. Mm -hmm. so these key pieces, you'll notice if you look for the recipe for them, gilded chest loot. Um, but you don't need to do that. What you can do is press Control, uh, Shift for vault loot info. Find a gilded chest level 11 plus and strong boxes level 50 plus. And the strong boxes, I think, are on the other side of the door that the key opens. So never mind them. Level 11 plus has been how long we've been able to get these. And only just now is when we did get them. And you need eight of them and a key mold, which is a perfect echo gem. <laughs> Uh, which is not cheap either. And of course, these black chromatic steel ingots, which is everybody's favourite. Just to get into one of those doors that we've been seeing. Two relics, nice. That's a new one. It's the warrior relic, which is a new new one, I believe. All righty, job done. All built. This person is not moving. I, I'm hoping that at some point this villager will do something. Um, Because... I am relying on them to feed potatoes to this one, and therefore supply potatoes. Um, I don't know why. It took me a few goes to even get them to be a farmer. So something's weirding here. Um, we'll, we'll check back on that later. So that's potato farm done. I went into a raw vault. I got a few extra things, including finally some pumpkins. Too little too late, mate. We've already done it the old-fashioned way. Uh, oh, and it's time for these things and these things. Get lost. Ooh, what else? Well, I, I guess we need to know what's... Yeah, potatoes are going to be the important thing for our next crystal. So we'll wait for that to figure itself out. Uh, and then come back and see what's next. No, they seem alright. Look, they're having a chat. Just get farming. <laughs> you, you have a job. Get to it. Or I'll fire you and find someone who will. Well, it turns out that what's next is the end of the episode. It's been a good half an hour, so thank you for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you'll join me next time as we plough our way through to level 24 and spend this skill point that I've just realised I've still got to do. So until next time, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you.